Good Monday morning, everyone. Last month uh, in Denver at the OTO's uh, uh, National Convention, our uh, U.S. Uh, Grand Master, uh, Sabazius, announced that there uh, would be an addition to the to the Gnostic man, uh, excuse me, the 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 saints list uh, of the Collect section of the Gnostic Mass. Uh, we're honoring a new canonized inductee into the saints section of uh, of the Gnostic Mass, and it's Harry Everett Smith. And it's this colorful character right here. Okay. Now, I'm not going to be able to uh, uh, even scratch the surface of a surface scratch of the, the life and adventures of Harry Smith. But I will go so far as to say quite safely if you like rock and roll or if you like popular music or if you like blues or if you like folk music or if you like country music if you like any sort of radical music that has changed the planet in the last 100 years it's likely that you came in contact with those art forms because of Harry Smith. Here's another picture of Harry Smith. And he's actually wearing an OTO. <laughs> he was a Gnostic bishop from way, way back. Okay. And... Uh, I, I believe, I'm not sure, somebody could probably correct me, that uh, uh, this was uh, his uh, avant-garde outfit that he wore, I believe, at Allen Ginsberg's uh, funeral. I may be mistaken. It's either Harry showed up to Allen Ginsberg's funeral or Allen Ginsberg showed up to Harry's funeral. In any event, Harry's funeral was presided over by a Gnostic Mass, an OTO, EGC Gnostic Mass, celebrated by the New York City uh, OTO Tehuti Lodge. Uh, I believe our departed brother, uh, James Wasserman, actually was uh, uh, served as priest at that, uh, that Mass. And forgive me if I don't know the names of the other officers. Harry Smith was an important guy. And he was a very, very, very strange guy, too. And I'm going to refer everybody. At, I'm going to encourage you all. I'm going to expect all of you to take a few minutes today and just go to Wikipedia and go Harry Everett Smith and read the nine pages of non-stop, interesting, colorful uh, description of his life and his work. It is no secret that rock and roll changed the world in the 1950s and uh, the rock and roll grew out of several musical genres that all came together in a in a wild magical broad hybrid of of uh, of music that changed cultures that changed politics that that but most of all that changed consciousness there was a group in new york that uh, 
uh, called The Village Fugs, which Harry Smith had a direct, uh, uh, not only influence on, but he helped produce uh, them. His, his, they chant his name in one of the, one of the, the songs. And uh, they were very literate and very uh, uh, intellectual and very wild and crazy sex, drugs, and rock and roll and Milton. And they quote Plato, I believe, in one of their songs. And it says, when the, when the mode of the music changes, the walls of the city shake. And the Fugs were responsible for that, that uh, uh, historic anti-Vietnam protest at the Pentagon. I forget what, what year it was, but it was the, one of the hugest public demonstrations in United States history. And they organized uh, thousands of people to literally circ uh, uh, surround the, that huge uh, Pentagon building while they all chanted Om. And it was, it was a, a, a ritual intended to lift the Pentagon off the ground. Okay. Well, physically, it, of course, it didn't happen. But the ritual that the Fugs used at that, that bizarre, historic, wild moment in American history was written by Harry Smith. He was uh, responsible for uh, uh, influencing uh, and recording in his, his apartment in Ch the Chelsea Hotel. Okay. He is the beatnik's beatnik. And Harry Smith was a Kabbalist, and Harry Smith was a magician. And uh, I'm going to read just a couple of, uh, uh, of things uh, from that, uh, that little Wikipedia article just to uh, uh, sort of flesh out uh, what was uh, published by uh, our friends in the OTO, in the German OTO, uh, Brother uh, Asotros, uh, who is the uh, Frater Superior's representative in Germany. He made this uh, announcement on, on their Facebook page about Harry's canonization. And if you think it's kind of flippant that he would... Uh, even that this wild, crazy, wonderful person would be canonized as a Gnostic saint. This is more than just, we love you, Harry, and this is something nice we can do. If, uh, if you remember what a Gnostic saint is, it describes it in the Colics. Let's see here if I can just find it really, really uh, quickly. Here's what it says a Gnostic saint is. Life of man, uh, Lord of life and joy, that art the might of man, that art the essence of every true God, let's see, uh, that's upon the surface of the earth. Continuing knowledge from generation unto generation. Thou adored of us upon heaths and in woods, on mountains and in caves, openly in the marketplaces and secretly in the chambers of our houses, in temples of gold and ivory and marble, as in these other temples of our bodies. We worthily commemorate them worthy, that did of old adore thee, and manifest thy glory unto men. And at the very end, after all of these lists, and uh, Harry will be added right after uh, Paul Gauguin, 
O sons of the lion and the snake, with all thy saints we worthily commemorate them worthy that were and are and are to come. And some of those, uh, I read it just the other day to, uh, to you, I read them all to you. Uh, may their essence be here, present, potent, puissant, and paternal to perfect this feast. So let it be. You know, it's people that change the consciousness of the planet aren't always super famous, although Harry was famous, but not that famous. He was famous enough to not pay his hotel bill and not, and not leave the hotel and they won't kick him out. That's, that's, that's about how famous Harry was. But he changed the consciousness of the planet and he changed, you and me wouldn't, I wouldn't be talking to you right now without the chain reaction set into motion by Harry Smith and his anthology of American folk music that's at the Smithsonian Institute that made the, 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 the rhythms, the, 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 the beauty, the art, the magic which would become uh, rock and roll, kept that alive through the 30s, through primitive recordings and things like that. Uh, uh, you've got to read the, the article to realize how important Harry Smith was. And this is what uh, the Frater uh, uh, Superior's representative in Germany uh, posted on Facebook recently. Harry Everett Smith, canonized as a saint of Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica. Hymenaeus Beta, patriarch of Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, has canonized Harry Everett Smith as a saint of Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica with the following message. And this is Hymenaeus Beta's quote. Yes, he was my friend and mentor, and he was proud to serve as the bishop of our Gnostic and Catholic Church. But he was so much more. With each passing year since his grand feast, I've learned to appreciate the breadth, depth, and height of his cosmic vision and the true extent of his lasting influence. Harry had a plan for this world, but America in particular. His ruthless gaze saw us as we really were, but he firmly believed in a just and joyful society guided by love and will a world free of class, free of injustice, free of prejudice, free of persecution, free of elitism, and free of coercion. A world where all cultures and people are unrestricted and respected according to their own standards. He moved the needle measurably to make this a reality. He was a true son of the lion and the serpent and destroyed the destroyer. He was the occultic genius behind the ritual of levitating the, the, Pentag uh, the Pentagon afloat to end an unjust war. He witnessed how America changed and when he received the Grammy, shortly before his death, he said, quote, I'm happy to say that my dreams have come true, unquote. That I saw America change through music, and that all the stuff the rest of y'all are talking about, unquote. 
He has led us from the old, strange America to a new America and a new world that's even stranger. And that was uh, Hymenaeus Beta's uh, words. OTO bodies around the world will in the future include the name Harry Everett Smith into the Gnostic Mass collection of saints when they recite the full list of names immediately after Paul Gauguin. Love is the law, love under will. Father Ostatos, Frater Superior, is representative of Germany. So, you know what a Gnostic saint looks like? That's Harry Smith. Now, I never met Harry Smith, but many of the OTO uh, members in, uh, especially those of Tehuti Lodge in uh, uh, New York City, uh, knew Harry very well. Uh, here's, uh, I'm just going to read a snippet or two that I can just quickly do in the next uh, just couple minutes here. Uh, he was born uh, May 29th, 1923, and died November 27th, 1991. Was an American polymath, experimental filmmaker, bohemian, mystic, record collector, hoarder, <laughs> student of anthropology, and a neo-Gnostic bishop. Smith was an important figure in the beat generation seen in New York City and its activities, such as his use of mind-altering substances and interest in esoteric sp spirituality, anticipated aspects of the hippie movement. And Constance and I are old hippies, okay. We're just not quite old. I love the beatniks, so when I was a kid, I wanted to be a beatnik and wear a beret and snap my fingers. Besides his films, such as a full-length, cut-out, animated film, Heaven and Earth Magic, 1962, Smith is also remembered for his influential anthology of American folk music. That's, that's what he got a Grammy for, okay? Drawn from his extensive collection of out-of-print commercial 78 RPM recordings. The, the 78s, okay, uh, I remember 78s. The first records that we played at my home were 78s. But once they were gone, they were gone, okay. And a lot of the regional uh, uh, folk music wasn't uh, recorded to be released nationwide at all. They were meant to be released in 78s and just played in your town, in your county. And once they were gone, they were gone. And that whole section, a whole generation of music was getting ready to be lost on an on a 78 RPM record that if you dropped it, it shattered like glass. Harry Smith collected all of those, itemized them, indexed them, kept them alive to influence the, the Carter family, to influence uh, Leadbetty. Okay, I get all excited. Throughout his life, Smith was an invertebrate, not an invertebrate, collector. Well, he was, uh, he was, <laughs> he was an invertebrate. Other than records, his collections included string figures, paper airplanes, seminal textiles, and Ukrainian Easter eggs. Okay, he was born in Portland, Oregon, all of this. Uh, physically, Smith was undersized and had a curvature of the spine, which kept him from being drafted, a circumstance that later would disqualify him from benefits uh, from the GI Bill. 
uh, uh, he took a job as a mechanic. Uh, uh, because of his weird shape, he could reach hard to reach uh, interiors of bombers and things like that. Uh, Smith used the money he made from his job to buy blues records. The money also enabled him to study anthropology at the University of Washington. Uh, for five semesters between 42 and 44, he uh, focused on American Indian tribes. His, uh, they, they lived near a reservation when they, uh, as he was growing up. His mother even taught at an Indian reservation. And he made numerous field trips to document the music and customs of the, the, the Lumi Indians, uh, whom he had gotten to know through his mother's work with them. Uh, when the war ended, uh, he was 22, and he moved to the Bay Area of France, San Francisco, home to a lively bohemian folk music and jazz scene. As a collector of uh, blues records, he had already been corresponding with the noted blues aficionado James uh, McCune, and he now began seriously collecting old hillbilly music from junk dealers and stores which were going out of business and even appeared on a, a guest on a folk music radio show uh, hosted by poet Jack Spicer. Okay, uh, in 1950, he received a Guggenheim grant to, to complete an abstract film. That's when he moved to, to uh, New York and uh, 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 when his money ran out, he, he brought the cream of his recording collection uh, to Mo Ash, the president of Folkways Records, uh, with the idea of selling it. But Ash uh, proposed that uh, Smith, who was 23 at the time, use the material to edit a multi-volume anthology of American folk music in long plane format. So it'd be like the, the equivalent of uh, taking a priceless recording that was getting ready to deteriorate or completely disappear and transferring it uh, to, more, uh, uh, to, to a new advanced technology. It's like when the LPs uh, were converted to uh, uh, CDs or when those tapes were converted to CDs. So they wanted to save this material. It was like a Noah's Ark of, of American folk music. Because uh, the LP then was uh, cutting edge technology. Okay. Uh, the music on Smith's anthology uh, was performed by such artists as Clarence Ashby, Doc Boggs, the Carter family, for Christ's sake, Sleepy, Sleepy John Estes, Mississippi Joe Hurt, uh, Blind Lemon Jackson. Uh, you know, it's just a huge long list of uh, uh, 50s and 60s. Um, and uh, it was the, the material that was picked up uh, and covered by the Lost City Ramblers in New York City, Bob Dylan and Joan Baez. Uh, Okay, uh, let's see. Dave Van Ronk, we all knew every word of every song, including the ones we didn't like. Okay. Smith was also unique in associating folk music with the occult. The design he chose to be printed on the box covers, for example, of the anthology, was taken from an engraving by Theodore de Bray, uh, uh, the, the great hand turning the wheel of the celestial monochord. Okay. Smith sold interviewer John Cohen, uh, or told him that he had first heard this kind of record at home of uh, Bertrand Harris Bronson, the eminent English professor and ballad scholar who collected them. In 1946, uh, Smith reportedly lived for a time in a small room with a separate instant, uh, entrance on the first floor of Bronson's Berkeley residence. And that's where everyone 
hung out at his house. Every day was Monday night magic at the apartment. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. There's tons of other stuff, other recording projects. Um, then it was re-released, got a Grammy, Occult Interests. Smith said he had become acquainted with Lumi Indians through his mother's teaching work and claimed to have participated in shamanistic initiation at a young age. He recorded Lumi songs and rituals using homemade equipment and notation of his own devising, uh, devising and had an important collection of Native American religious objects. Tarot was another of Smith's interests. A set of irregularly shaped tarot cards he designed was apparently used for the degree uh, certificates of a branch of Ordo Templi Orientis, founded by occult magus Aleister Crowley. Remember, this is Wikipedia, okay? In the late 1940s, uh, California, Smith founded by occult, uh, founded by occult magus Aleister Crowley, uh, Oh, talking about those OTO certificates. Uh, in the late uh, 1940s in California, Smith is said to have worked with Charles Stanfield Jones, the one-time acolyte of Ipsissimus Aleister Crowley. Smith would later study under Jones's trusted student, Albert Handel, in New York. Smith frequented Samuel Weiser Antiquarian Bookstore, a used store on New York's Book Row, and young James Wasserman was working at that store at the time. Uh, that specialized in the works of comparative religion, hermeticism, and the occult. The store's publishing house, Weiser Books, Use Smith's design for its paperback edition of Aleister Crowley's Holy Books of Thelema. Uh, Sanders, now this is uh, uh, Sanders, the, one of the leaders of the, the Fugs, I think we're talking about here, recounts that Smith was the key advisor for Allen Ginsberg and the Fugs effort to levitate the Pentagon, <laughs> the Pentagon in the fall of 1967. Sanders wrote, a bunch of us decided to exercise the demons from the Pentagon as part of the big demonstration against the Vietnam War. You can get a flavor of that day from Norman Mailer's Armies of the Night. I was in charge of coming up with a structure for the exorcism and I knew Harry would want, would know what, what to do, so I conferred with him. He gave me the basic outline, which was to use the symbols of the four directions and to use the symbols of earth, air, fire, and water. He also suggested adding a cow <laughs> to represent the goddess Hathor. We did have a cow prepared, painted with myth mythic symbols, but the police stopped it <laughs> from getting near the Pentagon. <laughs> The exercise was duly recorded by WBAI's Bob Foss and can be found on the Fugs album, Tenderness Junction. Okay. Uh, Smith also studied a Nokian system in depth. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, okay. He, he compiled a concordance of the Enochian language. Uh, in 1986, here's the dates for everything, 18, uh, was consecrated a bishop in Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, uh, an order which claims William Blake and Giordano Bruno in its uh, pantheon of saints. Smith was long familiar figure in the New York branch of the OTO. In uh, 2023, Smith was accorded the very rare honor of being canonized. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, and he died at the Hotel 
Chelsea, there's that line. He was, uh, Smith lived at Hotel Chelsea. That's an infamous beatnik hotel uh, on the West, West 23rd Street in New York City, residing in room 731 from 1968 to 70, 1977. So nine years he lived at the hotel after which he was sometimes stranded at hotels where he would owe so much money he couldn't leave. And he was too famous just to be thrown out. <laughs> now that's magic. Okay. Okay, and he uh, uh, died of a bleeding ulcer, actually. Anyway, that's, that's Harry Smith. And just to... Uh, uh, review what uh, was said by Hymenaeus Beta. Yes, he was my friend and mentor. Anyway, St. Harry Smith, O Sons of the Lion and the Serpent. Okay. Um, that's it for today. That's and excuse me for being only scattered prepared, but I really, really, really encourage you uh, for no other reason. If you're not interested in anything else except uh, a very important, weird and colorful, important personages of the 20th century and realize that his influence has characterized your taste and interests and appreciation of, of music, whatever that might be right now. Anyway, until tomorrow, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.